Peace family, Will Roundtree here with today's show on The Wealth Files. For those who may not know, a uh, two-time author, book Credit is King, as well as full-time CEO, The Shit They Don't Tell You. How you what you think about that title? I love it. You love it? It's straight. I like it. I like <laughs> Absolutely. It a lot. And so I'm actually sitting here today with a very special guest, a good friend of mine. Uh, actually cleared his schedule last minute. Man, I appreciate that. I too, man. Definitely appreciate I that. that. We got King Wayne Lewis up in the building. How you doing today, King? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. How you doing? Oh, man, I'm blessed. You feeling good? I'm, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. It's, it's nice out today. Mm-hmm. The weather is nice. We live where it doesn't snow. Uh, Occasionally. Ah, uh, that's... <laughs> Ah, that's See, I'm a, from Milwaukee. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. okay. So, so that's you real get, snow. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, real. The, look, real that's, snow the, the snow we get here, that's play snow. Oh, okay. I don't even think it's snow. It's just somebody well, I mean, just you know, we, sprinkling some stuff outside. Any little bit of slushy that we that we get. We can't drive. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> the city Caught shut it down. Off work, you know. Definitely, man. Definitely. So, no, again, I definitely appreciate you cleaning your schedule. So, tell the people a little bit about yourself and uh, and all that good stuff. And then, you know, we're going to hop in. Um, I've been in Vegas about uh, probably... 10 or 11 years. Uh, um, been all, I've always aspired to be an entrepreneur. Of course, you know, I was lost like a lot of teens growing growing up, kids growing up. I'm originally from L.A. Okay. Uh, I've been on both sides. Uh, my uh, uh, family is from the Nickerson Gardens. And, you know, my mom stayed on 21st and Adams. So I was always at my mom's house or at my auntie's house in the projects. Okay. So... The resources, not didn't have them. No, nah, <laughs> right. not even. What you know about a syrup sandwich? Man, a lot, <laughs> a lot. Mayonnaise sandwiches. <laughs> Man, see, I ain't like I mean, mayonnaise. Yeah, I mean, I, right, right. you know, uh, well, you have so, to eat what you have to eat. I right, guess. right, right. So, uh, you know, you very limited resources. So, but what it was with me as a kid, I was always a dreamer. Definitely. Um. So I definitely looked up to you know. The drug dealers and the D-boys I was around, you know, on the blocks and all this, they had the nicer things, but I didn't aspire to be like them. Correct. Simply because I seen the outcome. Always death, robbery, um, or jail. And I didn't want to experience neither one of them. That was cool to be around and, you know, they... It was the lifestyle. Yeah. I mean, their they kids had attention. So you, yeah. you can help but to play with Absolutely. their kids. You know what I'm saying? So... You see that kids on a brand new BMXs and you know, the, <laughs> right. you know the GTs and all that stuff. It's like, dang, you know what right. I'm saying. So you always down at their house and you seeing that, you know, what's going on. But I knew that was something I, uh, I didn't aspire to be. Correct. You know, so I, I looked up. As weird as this gonna sound, um, Fresh Prince of Bel Air was one of my favorite shows, mm. and I was so mad when I found out it was fake. <laughs> but just crazy that show. <laughs> right. It, it's it's like I wanted what I wanted that lifestyle. Right. I wanted that lifestyle. So I was chasing that as a kid. I wanted wow. to be like every time I seen a house in a nice neighborhood, I'm like, oh, that's the one that uh, that's where they film right. fresh ones. But like, right. I, it was always a thing to me, and I always stuck to that. So I think that's what kept me grounded and sane at the same time and always looking, you know, forward and looking toward to better things is just because I felt like there was a better life. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Right. And that's what I sought after. You know, of course, you grow up and you find out that there's a script, <laughs> there's a writer, there's an executive right, producer. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, damn. But it still didn't stop me because then you go out and you 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 find mentors and internet exists and you see that, yo, this is real. Right. And then you see cats like Puff, Jay, Dane, um, cats that look like me. Definitely. And and that's important, seeing people that look yes. like you. And granted, I only named three. <laughs> right. But that's that's enough. That's a start. You know Absolutely. what I'm saying? So I went after that. Like, I'm like, yo, if they can do it, I can do 100%. it. And that's the kind of mindset that I have. Definitely. And I've always had that mindset. And uh, shoot, just... Just got out there and, Definitely. and just chased it and learned learned on my own. A lot of self taught, uh, a lot of reading, a lot of watching tutorials, a lot of just, I mean, keeping yourself motivated and grounded, and also believing in God. Hundred percent. Because this is something that wasn't always not always, but it's something that wasn't in my household at all. Granted, mm. my grandmother's super religious. She still go to church to this day. Right. Um, but she never forced religion on us. When I was always a kid that. 
I mean, church four hours long. I mean, they're yeah. kicking and screaming. And then you got to go back. Kicking down. And, right. uh, she, you know, I just, she didn't force it on us. But, you know, I felt like it was it was better that way because we didn't, I, I didn't take it for granted. Correct. You know, once I did find, you know, uh, God in my life and started to believe in God and the energy in the universe and understanding how, putting him first, how much it works for you and it gives you something to live for and look forward to every day. Definitely. You know, just having that solid foundation. You know what I'm 100%. saying? Belief in. Right. And the rest is history. I just kept going. Right. That. And so that's so interesting. You said you just kept going despite your extreme humble beginnings. Right, and so, right. And that's kind of what I want to talk about today is just never giving up. Because, uh, you know, also often it's very easy for individuals that come from communities like ours. You know, I'm myself from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Now, a lot of times I tell people that the, the first reaction is black people in Milwaukee. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I tell people. It, it ain't sweet out there. At all. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> at all. Yeah. And so, uh, so, yeah, growing up in the city of Milwaukee, you know, like you say, aspiring to be like the drug or aspiring to have the things mm -hmm. like the drug dealers right. and, the, and the D boys, the street boys and all of that. But I never wanted that lifestyle because I knew what the alternative was. Right, right, right. You know, you don't retire from that. No. You know, gang banging was big in Milwaukee. You know, we didn't have the Bloods and Crips, but we had GDs and Vice Lords growing right. up in Milwaukee. And so being able to just avoid all of that. But what was interesting because, you know, I grew up, I was a pretty quiet kid, but, uh, they were all, I was always cool with all of the gang bangers yeah, and the yeah. D boys and all of that. I guess maybe just because of how I moved, right. you know, I will, they the always same said, way. Yeah. They always I thought I was stealth. Yeah. So they probably thought I was one of them, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Kind of mysterious. But, you know, I always just had big goals, big aspirations, dreams. Like you said, seeing imagery on TV of positive black entrepreneurs and moguls right. and different things like that. And so it was that's, that's what I aspired. And it mm -hmm. wasn't what they had. It was more so how they were able to inspire others through their actions and their walks and different things like that. But I know they faced adversity. You know, I'm sure you faced adversity coming oh, from L.A. Still. You, walking still, out the front yeah, door, still to this you're day, facing yeah, adversity, you know, growing up out there. So talk about just your start in entrepreneurship. How did you go from, you know, coming from, you know, the inner cities of uh, Los Angeles to where you are now as an entrepreneur. Well, my first business uh, was an insurance agency here, oh, wow. here in Vegas. Okay. Yeah, and I opened that at 20 years old. Wow. Um, uh, it's crazy. How'd how you I, even get the mindset to oh, man, an insurance dude, agency I, yeah. at 20? Okay, this is, I was with, at the time, this guy that I knew, his dad uh, was like the, the DM, was the district manager over there, and we was going through like folios. He was just kind of showing me everything. And, um, I never forget, uh, there was a, a folio, which is how the agents get paid. Okay. And I was like, oh, wow, he made 60000 last year. That's, 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 that's a lot. You know, right. to me at that time, I'm like, I want to make 60000 <laughs> yeah, Right. He's like, no, nah, he made that last month. Right. So, yeah, he made that last month. Now, before you go on from that story, <laughs> it's interesting that you had that kind of Oh damn! Moment, mm -hmm. yeah. Because I don't think a lot of people can fathom making sixty grand a month. Mm -hmm. Some people don't make six thousand a, a six thousand a month. Right, right, right. You know, yeah. or like you say, even sixty thousand a year. Mm -hmm. So I can only imagine when you saw that, you like, yo, I was. What do I got to do? To oh, yeah, sign up exactly. For that? <laughs> yeah, I was like, how? At first, I didn't believe him, and then he was like, no, this is the date, March first. And this is March 31st. Right. And this is what the folio spit out. And I was like, holy sh... Like, he made $60,000 in one month? And how did he do that? <laughs> right. He's like, you want to learn? I said, yeah. He said, I'll teach you. I mean, he put me, you know, with the agent and I was working for the agent and it kind of got... Of course, he's a district manager. He's not... You know, he... I'm not sure if he was testing me or what it was, but... I didn't really hear too much from him after that. So Correct. what I did was uh, I asked the agent I was working for uh, for his books to get his license. Oh, and wow. And I self-study. You know, most people go to classes. Right. You know, I didn't have the money. Right. I was walking to work every day, mm. you know, with, you know, uncomfortable. I didn't even know how to dress at that. Like, as far as professional, I thought oh, it looked cool. I but was when the you, same boat. When you look at it, it's like— My first look, business meeting I had mm -hmm. on Tim's. Yeah, see? <laughs> I, I think I had, like, the— 
McDonald's manager, kitchen worker sh- <laughs> shoes on, which I thought was fly at the time. Some oversized dress pants, and you know, some sweaters. I thought I was, a, I was, you know, I thought because again, my perception of success was that. 100%. So as long as I looked successful, I felt like you know right. I was, I was cool. Right. But um, I self studied, um, went and took my license, and know that uh, each test that you pass or fail costs a hundred dollars. Mm. So whether you pass or fail, you go take it again, it's another hundred, it's another hundred. So I was gung ho on passing, passing, passing. And passed them. I think I took one, because there's two sides. There's life and health, and then there's property and casualty. And I, uh, the life and health, I passed with the first shot. Property and casualty, I had to go back a couple of times and took it, eventually passed it, Um, started to work. You know, again, I didn't jump out there first because I didn't feel like I was ready. But, I mean, when do you know? When you're ready Right You just gotta do it I just did it And that's the thing I tell so many Up and coming entrepreneurs They hit me up all the time Like yo Will I wanna do this How do I start I'm like you just gotta do it You just gotta start You have to You just gotta You just gotta go for it Because There's no better time Than right now And that's how I I, I, I tell everybody And what do you mean By right now Start right right now now. Literally Start right now Whatever you wanna be Don't wait to become it Become that now Right You wanna be a boss Carry yourself like a boss. Mm. Always think like a boss in all aspects and all fa- whatever you're doing in life at home. Be the boss. It starts with the mindset. The yes. I say eighty percent of success is mindset. That's it. Because you have to believe it first. Exactly. Like I was telling myself, I was a boss way before I became mm-hmm. a boss. I was telling my bosses at my job that hey, I was I'm a boss. boss. Yeah. <laughs> you know what yeah. I'm saying? So like, it really do start with that mindset. Yeah. So it's interesting with that, like, and that what you said was that one you self study for the test. Yes. Uh, that means you was ambitious, very. You still was am. hungry. Yeah, same, same ambitious, and same ambition to today that I had when I first started is because I feel like it's something that is just in you. It's right. not on you. I feel like once you have that switch on, it needs to stay on. It has to that burning desire. I say there's three qualities you got to have to be successful at whatever. Mm-hmm. You got to have a burning desire. Yep. That's that switch. Mm-hmm. That switch has to stay on when you're sick. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? When you you're, want, like, when you don't want to get up, like mm-hmm. no matter what the weather is like. Now, I'm not saying you got to burn yourself out, but that just means you got to always stay hungry. Yes. You know, the second quality is you got to be willing to work. Absolutely. A lot of times people feel, oh, I have a great idea. Well, that doesn't mean you're going to work, work it's not going to exactly, work. Exactly, exactly. You know? And then that third one, I think that I think you exemplified that, just being able to go to that person and say, hey, I want to be able to do that. Mm-hmm. And then following through with everything is being coachable and teachable. Right. I meet so many young people who say they want mm-hmm. it. They really don't want it though, Ken. Right. No, they don't. They don't. And that's why when they, people ask me, so what are you going to do about the competition? I'm like, what competition? Right. Oh, because he looked like he doing it. I don't even I can, care about that. I can go get some, buy some prop money, set it on the table, put some, <laughs> you know, some Armani shoes on in a suit, put my feet up on the table, cross them, and uh, that's success. I 100%. mean, you got to show me. Like you, you, you gonna beat me? You gotta show me. You gotta show me. You gotta show me, and I'm just that. I'm just that kind of guy. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, um, from there, once I got, uh, once I got all my licenses and things, and you know, just kept working and working, dude. I was doing. I was calling 150 people a day. Mm. I did that for a, a year. Wow. I caught 150 people a day. It's a numbers game. I went door to door in dress shoes and passed on my business cards. Some people didn't answer. Some people slammed the door in my face. Some people looked like they had guns on them. I didn't care. I wanted it that much. Right. I sat at dealerships for 12 hours. I did everything I needed to do to be successful and to make money because I was all I had. And I knew that... This is something I wanted to do. Right. What that did was it turned into me being career agent of the year. Wow. Me getting a century award. A century award. Remember, century. Right. How many years is a century? That's a hundred. I got that in four years. Well, they give it to agents every 10 years. Wow. I got it in four. You was hungry. I was starving. <laughs> I was, right. so I had a point to prove. Right, 100%. Um, and 
just, you know, kept going. Just making some money, you know, charges is hot at the time. Got right. a charge. You know, just, <laughs> you know, doing, doing my right. thing. And I was still so young, you know, and then um, just, I feel like I hit a ceiling in that industry and I wanted to do more. I was always like a creative dude. I always, my whole thought process was just a lot different. But, you know, even with owning an agency, there's still rules. Mm -hmm. And I'm not a fan of rules because they're man-made. Right. Granted, there's laws of the land and you obey those, but I, I just don't like rules too much. Because I think I that's why I'm unemployable. Why. Right. I don't think I could work for somebody. Right. Again. I just always ask why. <laughs> right. Why is that? And they don't like when you ask why sometimes. No, they don't. Because <laughs> it's a rule. And they don't even know why because they're employees themselves. 100%. You can't blame them. Right. You know, they're a sheep leading sheep. Mm. And that's, you know, oh, all right, cool. So, you know, with the... Being a, a you know an agent, you're a subcontractor, but you're still selling their product. Right. So you still have to abide by their rules, and it's only so big you can get. And they got tenured agents, and I'm a young dude, and I just didn't feel, see myself doing that forever. So where'd you go from that point? Um, after that, you know, it was kind of in a weird spot because you know I was kind of lost in a sense, and then um, I got into just designing and creating and design and clothing mm. and got into that heavy and it's that those things started to t those things started to take off my first business with that was a company called Famous Nobodies. Okay. Um it's like getting my feet wet. It was tough at first. So again, I approached that the same way I did the uh insurance game, printed out hundreds of shirts, folded them up and gave them away. Mm. Gave them away because I wanted to play the numbers game. My thing was I wanted to look bigger right. than I was. So when people seen, they're always seeing your shirts your, around. Your brand, hundred percent. I gave them out every time I was at the gym. My brand, my shirts was my business card. Right. That was my business card. Yeah. Was my shirt. So it's it, interesting because like one of my brands and my partner and I is mm -hmm. uh, leverage everything. Okay. Okay. So we we only want to rock our own stuff. Same with this. So when yeah, we yeah. out and people start to notice that, like you say, it, the brand looks bigger. Mm -hmm. and so. Every time we come up with a new colorway, we we giving them away. Yeah. Because we want people to see that brand. Mm -hmm. So now it's synonymous when they hear leverage everything. Yeah. Or hear credit is king or mm -hmm. full time CEO or whatever that is. So right. no, that's that's dope. Yeah, that's that and to me, I just felt like I, that was that was my mindset with that. And then um when me like a year or two later, I met uh my business partner, Al Madden. And uh, instantly, me and him clicked. There was a dude, it was crazy, because the dude that introduced us, for some strange reason, he didn't want us to meet. Oh, wow. I don't know why, but he would always <clears throat> tell me, like, you know, bad stuff about Al. I don't know why. I didn't even know him. But Correct. it was just a, a separation. So even when I came over there, when I would go to, you know, the guy's crib, Al, Al was more of an a introvert, so he would always be in the room on his computer. He would never come out. So I never really got to thoroughly meet him myself right. until one day we played basketball. And instantly, we was been Velcro. Right. Every, ever since that day, me and him has talked. Every so supposed, day. that's how it was supposed to happen. Yeah. So everything, yeah. it was just organic. And then uh, I got with him, same work ethic that I, that, that I have. Uh, he just approaches it, you know, different. You right. know what I'm saying? So... Uh, we just start putting our ideas together. We came up with a backpack company called Amor Vita. Uh, not a, a luxury backpack company, but like a middle. Okay. It was fine middle. It was nice. It was inexpensive. And they did pretty, pretty, they did, did well. Right. You know, from there, uh, we just started to create brands and businesses. And then, you might have heard of it, uh, we created Skywalkers USA. Oh, wow. Uh, it's a hoverboard company. Right, right. Yeah. Definitely remember yeah. that. Yeah, so that right. was that was one of our... So if you hear it, you hear Meek say it, you hear uh, Chris Brown was on it. I mean, everybody. They, they don't mention the hoverboard without saying Skywalker. I've, I've, I've heard. Yeah, right. so yeah, that was ours. So, so now you said something that was interesting, that uh, you found a business partner that had the same work ethic as mm -hmm. you. Well, I didn't... I, don't, I wouldn't say I found them. Well, I just think me and him met up. Yeah, I just think we, it just kind of, oh, what's up? Oh, what's up? And you just, you know, certain people right. you just click just with. Just click. Now, but the point I want to make with that, isn't it refreshing to find someone that just, that 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 runs just as fast, just as hard as you? Because in business, yes. it's hard to find like-minded individuals that you can click with on that level. Yeah, because everybody only appears. They It's only a perception. Mm. So you have to weed through the bullshit. 
You have mm-hmm. to weed through the fakeness. You have to weed through, and that takes years because you may be with a business partner, a quote unquote business partner. And you think, oh, he works just like me. Come to find out, they it's don't. not it. Right. Next guy, come to find out, it's not it. It's come to find out, it's not it. And then you tend to stop searching or stop looking, but you have to weed. It's so many things you're gonna go through to find a person that you're equal. If if you ever do. I just think That's me and him getting lying this just was a, a blessing for right. both of us because me and him are best friends and business partners right. now. Like we literally we talking all day, every day. Same is nothing that's changed. Right. No, no big, no break, just constantly going and jumping off ideas and handling business together. That's so, just what we do. So let's springboard off of that then and uh failures. Mm-hmm. In business, because I'm sure you guys have witnessed some. Oh, I like lot. to call them experiences. A lot, yeah. <laughs> you a know, lot, a like, lot. Talk about some of the failures, but not only that, the lessons that you've learned from that. Because, like I mentioned, so often people just see the glamorized side mm-hmm. of business. So, you know, the success that came from the hoverboard success, they don't know what you guys went through. Oh, they oh. don't know the the money you probably lost in investments and oh, all of that man. stuff. So, talk about the failures with- and the lessons. With uh, with the with the hoverboard thing, man. Um, <laughs> um, that one was probably the biggest lesson ever. Because first off, you know, we young guys making a ton of. Bread. I can imagine. Now um, was 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 you guys hoverboard the one Mike Tyson fell off of? I don't know. <laughs> Did I, you ever see that? Yeah, I I, I don't know. It might have been. I mean, shit. Everybody <laughs> that just popped had, in my mind. Yeah, every, everybody the had them things, man. man. So, right. uh, but yeah, that was our uh, that was our tech company. Right. Um, and uh, with with that, first off, we're selling a hot product. Definitely right. So you got. A lot of people selling that product. You got guys on the streets. You got, I mean, anybody and everybody trying to get their hands on that. We just branded them I saw them in well. a gas station one time. Right. We, <laughs> we just were branded them well. Right. We, we branded them well. So we're dealing with companies like, uh, when processing your transactions, you deal with a company like PayPal. And again, uh, Al had already had dealt with them. So he kind of, Threw it out there. Remember, this is my first rodeo. This is my first big like business. You know, we're st- the money's coming in like crazy. He's like, bro, it's cool right now, but watch, like, just kind of make sure every. So we're working everything. I mean, we're you know these things weigh twenty five pounds, thirty five pounds a piece with the box. So we ship and we doing everything day in and day out. So there comes this big, this this big massive thing, which I feel like it was propaganda. Oh, they're catching on fire. Yeah. I remember this, that. that uh, come on, bro. Really? Did that hurt the business sales? Oh, it did. No, it it hurt <clears throat> it hurt the business sales. It hurt it hurt the whole industry because now they're trying to create laws. You need a license to ride a a, right. a toy. Right. I remember. But you that. don't need a license to to fly a drone. And people are attaching guns to drones and you don't need a license to carry a gun though. That is true. You know, but they're saying, oh, you need a license in New York. They taking them, they breaking them, they catching fire and all this other stuff. So what that did was that created a mass, you know, with with the way the news works, they never report anything good. So everything is bad. So you seeing people falling and hoverboards breaking up, people people running houses on fire. It, it, I'm like... <laughs> they showed the worst of the worst. Is this real? It looked <laughs> right. like the world was ending. <laughs> so I'm like, bro... <laughs> Are you seeing this shit? Right. So, you know, uh, again, PayPal call us, and uh, again, just the disputes are crazy. You know, it's, it was a major article about that with PayPal too, wasn't it? I think I remember money. reading it. Yeah, they hold your money. Yeah. Let me tell y'all something. Do not use PayPal or Stripe. You will be out of business if you are a big business or potentially a big business. They take your money. And they hold it for 180 days. Yeah, I've had mine held for 120 before. Oh, they, oh, they, oh, they lowered to 60. <laughs> right, yeah. They, you will be out of business. Do not, listen, if you're a small business, whatever. But if you plan on being big, don't go through those companies. It's all, it's, 
it's they're the worst. Right. They will put you out of business. So they held our funds. Uh, and again, we still had to ship and do all that stuff. So now we're using our and them, you know, them hover, they were expensive. Right. You know, I'm talking hundreds of dollars wholesale for one. Right. So we're spending, you know, countless amount of hours still shipping and and spending our own money, you know, stuff is just getting good. They're not budging. They're not doing anything. They, don't they care. literally hold your money. And they don't care. They don't care. Yeah. They use they they use the money. They yeah. build interest on it. Yeah. Think about it. They do it to a hundred. Yeah. That's all they do. You know, so it, it was just, man, that was a it was a it was a that was one of right. the, the very, very tough times and things that a lot of uh I, I constantly tell you know entrepreneurs you're going to go through that because if you're any kind of business that has the potential on being big or you're doing great you know and there's companies that do really really right. good there's people great, with great ideas with great products they're going to hold your funds and take your money and that potentially will turn bankrupt into, your business exactly you will you won't have a business right. because most people don't have credit and they don't have the liquid. So they're using the money that's coming in to buy product, yep. to sustain, to eat, to get gas, to buy labels, to you know handle and then chargebacks still and living off of too. And still living off <laughs> yeah, of, you know, yeah. going out to dinner and right. stuff like that. They hold that fund. They they <clears throat> hold all that and say, "We'll give this back to you in 180 days." Right. And you're like, "It's only January." Yeah. Oh yeah, you get it back in June. So let's 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 go into that with you know I call them lessons, mm -hmm. not necessarily losses, uh, experiences. Uh, in my book, full time CEO, the shit they don't tell you. Right. I like to talk about the ugly side of business, mm -hmm. the unglamorized side of entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. the uh, not just the 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 sleepless nights, the the loss of friends, <laughs> the loss of money, but no, loss of, like, a lot of you stuff. actually got to work. People mm -hmm. think entrepreneurship is this. I have an idea. I put on some fly outfits, take and, a picture and with I a money it. phone, mm -hmm. and I'm good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Does it work like that? No, not <laughs> at all, man. It's countless It's countless hours of uh, uh, planning. You have to learn marketing, how to market your product. It's a lot of stress. Uh, it's, uh, it's a lot of thinking ahead. Uh, Staying on top of everything, consistency. Um, a lot of days where your product isn't going to sell at all. I mean, yeah. you can have the flies not going to sell. Uh, you might be over buying, oh, over buying in bulk, mm. so you're sitting on stock, which is very, very bad. Which is the number one mistake a lot of you know up and coming entrepreneurs make in in all you know facets in all different industries is overstocking. Because there's no way you know even know how to scale your business or Correct. you know what how much product to buy. So why are you buying a thousand pieces? Right. <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah, no, you that's do true. Is a thousand people going to buy this? Right. So you're not scaling your business right. Um, I mean it's you know it's 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 a lot. And then knowing that your business is not doing well and you can't point the finger at nobody, you have but to yourself. sit there and figure this shit out. You do. That's to me. That's the probably the, the the darkest, those are the darkest days. Right. Because you're sitting there and you're trying to figure out like, why isn't this product selling? Or why, like, why aren't people, like, why aren't they gravitating? You think you have a great idea and you might. And it, not understanding that everything takes time to catch. It's people that release songs from two years and they become hits. Today. Just right now. Yeah. That happened with Lizzo, right? Um, she worked her record originally like almost yes. two years. LMA too. Yeah. Yep. The song, the song was old. Yep. Was, I think he Boot said up. like four years, yeah. four years, right? Yeah. It was a so uh it it's uh it's very it's it's very you I feel like you build a lot of character in your dark days. Mm. I think you those days define who you are. Sometimes that'd be the best part more than your the winning journey. days. Yeah. Like, I think about, like, when I moved to Vegas. I moved to Las Vegas. I borrowed 500 bucks mm -hmm. and I literally a garbage bag full of clothes. I'm on, a, right. I'm on the plane with a garbage bag. Uh. They're like, sir, you can't. These are my clothes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and so moved out here, uh, you know, was able, fortunate enough to buy a vehicle, slept in the car for a couple weeks. But I never felt, like, less than because I was so 
just focused on my journey, mm-hmm. that those were some of the funnest times in character building times mm-hmm. of my life. Yeah. And so uh, before we actually went live, you you and I were talking offline about, you know, people have this kind of false reality what entrepreneurship or success looks like. Yeah. And and you also talked about the timing. Mm-hmm. You know, I think, and I always talk about, and I have a chapter in a book that talks about typically anything you do, you want to give it a 90-day maturation process. And That's a lot it? of at minimum. Oh, I'm, I'm about talking to say about 90? at minimum. Mm. At minimum. Meaning like if I'm gonna do something, let's talk about mark from a marketing standpoint. Mm-hmm. I want to at least do it for 90 days consistently. Okay. So that's more what I'm talking about because I think a lot of times people will go try something for a week. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't work, prime example, the gym. January 1st, the gym is going to be packed. Lit, moving. I go January 15th, Mm -hmm. there's probably about seven of us in there. People lack consistency though. (laughs) Right. Yeah, but that falls under lack of consistency. Definitely. And so I think the same thing when it comes to entrepreneurship. And so talk about what you and I were discussing People, when they see, oh, I actually have to work to be successful. Mm-hmm. I actually have to do this. And you were talking about that false reality. Talk about like, what, what have you seen in that space? Because well, I know a, you've a, done a, a lot in that there's area. There's a false perception of what entrepreneurship is and what success is. First off, success isn't a destination. Mm. It's not an island. It's not a house. It's not things. Success is a daily thing. It's what you do daily. That's what success is based on. If just because you're not successful Monday does not mean you're unsuccessful or you're an unsuccessful person because Tuesday is a new day. But let's like say if you're that. unsuccessful the first week of December, you still have the second week. You have to grade your success based on what you've done and the things that you reply within that moment of that day and carry that thing, carry that on to the next day. They think that there's some kind of top. Like, oh, he's at the top. He's at the top. But what is the top? If you have more than me at this moment, then of course I'm looking like that. But you're at the top to me, but you're looking at Jay Z. And he's at the top. But Jay Z's looking at the prince of Saudi Arabia. <laughs> and he's, he's at the top. He's the top top. <laughs> he's, so <laughs> right. what is the top? Is the is the is the top a fine medium? Is the top someone is just someone doing a little bit better than you? It's it's defined in all, it's it's all wrong to me. It's just everything is false because now we have six 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 success and entrepreneurship is the perception of it is given by influencers, which has mm. a huge following. So they have a million followers or whatever. So they can put something up and automatically all their followers think, oh, this is what success is. Right. A rented suit and a rented Rolls Royce sitting in a parking lot uh, in a condo space that they don't own. So They don't even live there. They don't even live there. <laughs> but right. it looks good in that moment right. for that picture. It sells. And that's what you think success is. So you follow him, your eyes are constantly on there, but these are all images. Remember, you could take a picture a thousand times until you get it right. You have to know the difference. And it's it's so like mind-blowing to watch people now. Just everybody wants everything so fast. So we're willing to play successful and play entrepreneur mm. and just throw those words around. You just throw them. Oh, I'm successful. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm this. I'm that. It's just because the social media allows you to do that now. Definitely. Because I can capture that moment in that nanosecond. Boom. Yeah. And this is who I am. So we're okay today with just looking successful. Mm. Not necessarily being, just looking like entrepreneurs, looking like we're doing something, looking like life is good, looking like we're in love, looking like we're happy. And in all actuality, just a bunch of lost people and trying to find a way, but they are okay with what it is. Right. And so they spend this daily and daily and they waste so much of their time and their life away and not realizing that time it's something you're never going to get back. It's never going to be 2019 time. again. Right. You're never going to be 21 again. 
So you said something that was very interesting, and I want to ask two questions with this. So the first one is, when it comes to people creating that imagery, or even just some of the failures we talked about earlier, what lessons have you learned and how has it helped you catapult you throughout? Because it's very easy for someone to give up, Mm -hmm. you know? Uh, I just think about some of the things I've went through. I, one of my first investments, I lost sixty, seventy thousand. Mm-hmm. Was sued civilly, had to fight the court case. And people don't know when you're sued mm-hmm. to fight it, it's gonna it cost, cost you, you money. money. Yeah, it's gonna cost <laughs> you more than sixty, seventy, probably. You, right. Yeah. right. And so, so going through all of those things, like how do you just get the headspace to continue to go on? And then, from that standpoint of someone who deals with failure, because not everybody can handle everybody's threshold of dealing with. Trauma, because failing is trauma. Yeah, it can be you, different. You got PTSD from that. Definitely. How does that play on mental health? How does mental health oh, um, play into just the lifestyle of an entrepreneur or being in business? You, you have to, you, you, one, you got to maintain your sanity. Um, just from just business alone, you know, I've developed like work anxiety. So it, it hits me from time to time, you know, depending on my stress level. So I definitely. have to maintain that. But it, it definitely takes a toll on you. But you have to know that there's people, there's a kid that's looking up to you. Maybe you got a little brother or some other kids who just look up to you. So use that energy. But then there's a group of people, probably a larger group of people that want you to fail. Mm. So you go against them. You got any kind of just dogging you, lying, the ferocious animal, T-Rex, Alec, whatever you need. <laughs> right. Pull it out of you and prove the naysayers wrong. Because there's the there's the people who w- wanted to do what you did that didn't make it, trying mm-hmm. to do what you did, scared to do it. The doubtfulness, the ones who just don't want to jump, they don't want to see you succeed, the haters, everything. They're in that same bucket. You got to go at them. That should keep you going. Oh, they say the the sweetest revenge is massive success. Massive success on a large scale so that they can't ignore it. At all. You know what I'm saying? So to me, that's what kept me going because I know that there was people that didn't want to see me keep going. They want, oh, Wayne didn't make it. It didn't didn't, didn't work out. I don't never want to be the topic of that conversation. Correct. You know what I'm saying? So, And even just to prove it to myself. I think that's the most important part. I always tell myself that. Like, I did that. Yeah. <laughs> you know what like, I'm saying? Through through everything. I don't care what's going on. I'm like, yo, you're not going to defeat me. And I, it could be just whatever. Maybe it's just a, a bad day. I, I'll tell the day. You're not going to defeat At me. At all. You can't beat me. The day. It don't even have to be a person, per se. It could just be the energy of the day is just not, no, you're not yeah. going to beat me. Maybe you hitting your toe, you dropping the remote, you losing your keys. You ever had one of them days oh, yeah, where it's just yeah, definitely every like everything. All right, you hitting your toe, your your hand, your your burrito fell out the bottom. It's just, <laughs> it's just, yo, if the day is not the day, but some people let that defeat them. They so, do. Uh, the the fact that you even are saying, you know what, I'm not gonna let you defeat me today. Yeah, because it's easily for somebody to be like, you know, I'm just about to go in the room, close the door. Nah. And Netflix and be nah, by myself tonight. I'm gonna pick that burrito up. I'm say, okay, you don't want it in the shell, and eat it out the right, bowl. Right, right. You know, right. I I hurt my foot. I'm gonna stump out. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna dug right, it keep out. Going. I couldn't win a game at the gym. Okay, I'm about to go home. I'm about to win a game. Win a game. Right, right, you know right, right. So it it's you have to find you have to find one piece. You, it's very, very important, but you also have to have that undefeated mentality. You know, it's interesting. I, um, I always use a baseball analogy when I'm talking with a lot of uh, entrepreneurs, and I say a couple things in baseball. I'm not a baseball fan, but I love just the the metaphoric behind it, the metaphor behind it. One, that what's a good batting average in baseball? It was low. 30%. Yeah, yeah, baseball batting averages is low. But we're taught that 30% is failing. Mm -hmm. So you mean to tell me I can make hundreds of mil? Do you see some of these contracts that Mm -hmm. you get in baseball for batting three out of 10? Yeah, but see, that 30% goes back to school. That's the point I was making. It goes back to uh, elementary. Absolutely. Because we're rated from one to 100%. 30% is an F. So when we see 30% that's failing to us, 
that goes back to what we said, mental health and PTSD. 100%. And that's, that's exactly the direction I was going, which leads me to my next. Everything doesn't have to be a home run. It's people in baseball making, again, hundreds of millions who only get to, base, to get to first base. And so that's why I tell people, and even going back to your whole theory about you're not going to, the day is not going to defeat me. Mm -hmm. I believe in having milestone checkpoint goals mm -hmm. or like how you had saying success is daily. It is. And so I didn't get a sale today. Guess what? Tuesday, I got a sale. Maybe I got was five. successful. I maybe it made up for Monday. Exactly. And so that's why you can't give up. That's why it's important to always stay in the race. You know, I have a, a, a tattoo that says it's impossible to stop a man or woman that won't quit. As long as you don't quit, you haven't failed. Still and that's right. the mindset people have to have is like, I'm not going to let this day get the best of me. Exactly. I didn't eat today, but guess what? I'm going to eat tomorrow. I'm going to eat tomorrow. I'm eat, maybe you need to eat right now. You're going <laughs> to eat, in a, eat in, a, in a couple of hours. 100%. But everyone looks at, you know, the failing aspect of life as the end. He didn't, he didn't do it. It's, it's the end. Right. What, what now? There's no the end. This is just a lesson. You know, you can pick yourself up and just keep going. You have to. You, 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 you have to. It's... It's, you, you just got to look at things like, you got to look at whatever it is as you feel is defeating you and say, what else am I going to do? Mm. I want to do this. It's something you want to do. Pick yourself up. Go at it again. Go at it again. Go at it again. Go at it again. Continue to go at it. You know, I always say that if we had the confidence and resilience of a child, you know how much further we would be as adults? That's why in the Bible it says remain childlike. childlike. Doesn't, when the kid falls down, what happens? You tell a kid no a thousand times, what they gonna he do? He gonna keep asking you, or he gonna keep trying, or you gonna turn around, he <laughs> gonna have a face full of Vaseline. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, if we just had the resilience and then even the confidence of a child, mm -hmm. like I, I heard a speaker once say, "Could you imagine an adult going to buy some Ninja Turtle sneakers mm -hmm. that light up?" Right. We don't have that type of confidence. Nah, <laughs> so. it's, it's 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 stripped away from us. It is. It's stripped away from us through, you know, through their education system, through school. Mm. It's, it's That's taken away from us. You know what I'm saying? We're in a class. We all learn. We all learn different. Teachers telling you you're not good enough or showing you you're not good enough. Class is laughing. So it's like we're indoctrinated with failure. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's input and it's it's... It's taught. Failure is actually taught. taught yeah. Failure and fear, fear is, is actually a huge taught. One. That was actually what I was. You know, about those to say. are those are those are taught things because as kids, just like you said, as babies, you, I mean, you could be a guy with a gun with a knife, and I think it was on one of the scary movies. Dude. And what, a baby gonna walk up to him. A baby will walk up to him, hug his leg, and won't even know like oh, he's coming to right. do whatever he needs to do to whoever's in there. Right, and. That's stripped away from us because just how in this whole system to set up and not just only for a particular race or it's, it's for every, for right. every single person. We're all in that I class agree. together. We're all being taught these things together. You know what I'm saying? So it's up to you to, you know, reprogram yourself the mm. best way that you possibly can, whether it's rebelling against the machine or just breaking whatever vicious cycle that you've been in and just becoming this beast. Right. You know, and I feel like we we all have gifts and we're all more powerful than what we truly believe, especially our minds. Oh, you can control this universe and this world, even your lifestyle with your mind. 100%. You can control everything. You ever been singing a song and getting a car in a song? 100%. You, you like, think yeah. that's on accident? You you think that's on yeah. accident. So imagine if you told yourself, you know what? I'm I'm going to be that boss one day. Exactly. I'm going to be day. able to get my family out the hood exactly. and buy a house and, you know? Exactly. Like, and these are things like I can remember before the whole vision board mm -hmm. party scene was popular. Yeah. I can remember in, you know, 2009, me writing my goals down. Because mm -hmm. essentially that's what it is. It's goal setting. Right. But then... I write them down or put them on boards and have them in my house to hold me accountable. Mm -hmm. I was telling my mind, this is what I'm going to accomplish. Mm -hmm. Imagine if that's what we focused on every day. Yeah, but see, what it is is that they they took the vision board and they turned it into a fucking joke. 
Oh, I, that's what I said before it became. People are it putting today. like rings on there and fucking dogs and 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 suits, and it's like that's not a vision board. Right. Uh, of course, you want the things that you know the material from the material aspect. It's just to me, it's just to inspire you. A thousand percent. But the whole real vision board. It shouldn't be images. It should look like this whiteboard about just as big, maybe as size as that wall, a 50 by 50 if you could. I don't give a damn. Mm -hmm. It needs to be humongous. And it needs to have your goals written down there, but your goals need to be broken down to, the to a molecule. Yeah, to if you want to make a million dollars a year, what you got to do a day. That is $2,777.77 a day. That is $115 an hour. That's $1.92 a minute. You have to hold yourself accountable for what's on that board. And that's what that board will do. Period. All that Mercedes Benz shit and all that. That's, it's, Mercedes Benz get old. Ferraris get old. They're always <laughs> making a new one. So what, you going to put the new one up every year? You got to ask the universe something, but you got to break it down to a molecule so that you look at it and you know what the, what the day holds. You know what you didn't do today. You do that, you hold yourself accountable for every day. It will happen. You will get close to it at some point, but you cannot just put frivolous things on a board and think you don't know how to get those things. Those things cost money. Yeah. So it, it's a numbers game. If you don't have numbers on your vision board, don't show me that shit. You don't got times and dates and numbers on there. I don't want to see fucking Jordans and a mansion. and uh, I don't want to see yeah. that. Because what does that mean to you? What, you went in a fucking magazine and just tore out some pictures and put them on the board? That's, no, I, I, I that's completely your, that, agree. To me, that's a poster. So when you said it's a numbers <laughs> game, that's why you got the award Century. <laughs> I mean, the, 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 the Century Award. Century yeah. Award. Because you understood it was a numbers game. Yes. And just like I said before when I started, I said I knew how many calls I made every day. A lot of people don't focus on that. 150 right. calls a day. I still know those numbers because that's what it is. It's a numbers game. And you never gave up. And no. Every life is designed in numbers. It's all numbers. Your watch has numbers. We're sitting a certain amount of inches away from each other. That camera records at a certain number, certain pixels. You get what I'm saying? Absolutely. It's all broken down into numbers. We are numbers. You have to calculate your life in that order or else you're just kind of toying with this and not really taking this serious. You, your first, first valuable, most valuable asset outside of water. And it's time. Money is a tool. Granted, That's it's an it. asset we all need, but money is a tool. You can have an abundance of it. It just makes your work easier because it's a tool. You use tools to work on things. It makes your lifestyle easy. I get it. I understand. But money is also what? Numbers. Numbers. You look at that piece of green paper, and what does it have on there? <laughs> it's a number. It's numbers. Down to the smaller details on there, there's zeros and nines and ones. It's all numbers. So when you break down your goals... They have to be broken down into numbers to where that you understand your life has been calculated now. And then once those universe, those everything, you start to put these things together, it goes out in the universe. The universe takes control of it. Correct. And then you start to work towards those things. And you start to understand, like, okay, this is what I didn't do today. This is where I wasted time. This is what I need to do more of. Mm. I'll do better at it tomorrow. Right. And always know that tomorrow you can do better. Don't think like today is sometimes today is so hard that people end it today. Mm. But you still got tomorrow. You got you. Just shut it down. If you yeah. can't do it today, bro. Shut it down. Shut it yep. down. Close the laptop, close the computers, you didn't get no sales. Boom. But I guarantee you might open your computer up tomorrow. You might have $500 in sales. Before you even open it. Right. Yeah. But you had to put the time in to, to get, get to that. that. And yeah. that's the part. And so that actually goes to my next question. What advice would you give to someone who saying, you know what, Wayne, I want to become that entrepreneur. I want to become that boss. I want to, I don't follow rules of, you know, the land, mm -hmm. well, not the land, but of corporate America structure. How, what advice would you give someone looking to get into that realm? Um, never stop. 
don't listen to nobody. Not anyone that you aspire, not don't aspire to be like or don't have the knowledge or the things that you seek or is not in your industry. Because sometimes, a lot of times, we get caught up listening to our parents. They were taught a wrong, the wrong way. I'm just be I'm gonna say it, be frank with you. It wasn't taught the right way. Right. Uh, they don't speak from they speak from a naive perspective that is, isn't going to be helpful. Again, I'm not saying don't listen to them in the sense of, I'm not listening to you, but don't. When it comes to something that you truly believe in, listen to yourself. Do your due diligence and self educate and follow the people that are in your industry, doing it the right way, not just <laughs> Sally and Matt who just got a whole, no, no, no. Follow the the ones in your industry, the top dogs that's doing it the same way. Follow their blueprint. The blueprint is already laid out. Don't try to reinvent the wheel. Everything we've, we're doing, it's already been done before. Just follow the blueprint. Listen, don't look at the, the ending result. Always want to learn how that person got there. And backtrack and follow those steps, but never stop. Never listen to nobody. I mean, if you got something you truly believe in, regardless of what it is, I mean, don't listen to them. Prove them wrong. And look at, be inspired by everything. So never be closed-minded uh, in a sense of your thought process and how you look at things. Be open-minded so you can absorb Definitely. the energy that the universe is providing to you. And so that you can push your gifts out and um, continue to do that, you know, daily and and, and always. And know that uh, champions aren't undefeated. Mm. Champions are not undefeated. Okay? LeBron has been to the championship how many times? Yeah, a couple times. Pacquiao has lost. I mean, it's exceptional Floyd, you know, right. but... Champions aren't undefeated. There's a lot of people winning in this world who's dealt with losses and failures. <laughs> Nobody is undefeated. So if they appear perfect, run from them. Clearly. If he's a mentor, <laughs> wanting to be a mentor, run from him. If he appears perfect, run from him. <laughs> Flawless, run from him. <laughs> right. Champions aren't undefeated. That's why I always tell people, like, just be authentic. No matter. True to yourself. Like, like. I, like I always tell people And I share this in every interview I do Like I'm a horrible speller I mm -hmm. let people know that I'm dyslexic <laughs> You know so yeah, yeah. People be like You know what Oh me too mm -hmm. So I can do You know so mm -hmm. like Just being authentic man I'm telling you yeah. I like to wear hoodies I ain't trying to be in no suit Every single day Right 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 now, I, I do like to put on a nice suit though Yeah they're but comfortable I don't need that. They can you driving It's like <laughs> Yeah I gotta take the jacket <laughs> yeah, off yeah, yeah. But just being authentic And being yeah, yourself And yeah. so no I definitely Appreciate that And so uh, so just kind of summing everything up. And again, King, I, I appreciate your time today. In your words, what does it mean to never give up? You know, I know um, we, we can say that all the time, but to you, what does that mean? Never give, To me, never giving up is a mindset. Because you might not have the energy today, but never giving up is continuously going at that wall, being that bull in the room, and always believing in what you believe in and what you believe in is truly right for yourself, what you want, that life. You know, it's easy to give up. And a lot of people do, you know. Again, you know, it's just all about having that I'm gonna keep going mindset. You're gonna you're gonna cry, you're gonna go through stress, you're gonna it's it's gonna affect you mentally. But I, I promise you, in the end, it'll be worth it. Because you fought through the storm. You went through the fire. And that's what it's about. Everybody is going to go through the, on their own journeys. And I'm a person that's not, I'm not going to pull you from the struggle. Correct. Because I had to go through it. I'm only going to guide mm -hmm. you. I'm going to give you advice. I'm going to give you words of encouraging, of encouragement. And hopefully what I'm doing inspires you to keep going. So it's not your job to just take people with you no, to the top. And I think no, people no, get no. that misconstrued. No, no. They think, oh man, Wayne, you we grew up together. That's fine. I need to like that's fine. <laughs> but listen, we grew up together, but the top, there's there's no there's no door up there that has my name on it. <laughs> right. I still gotta work to stay at the top. Right. You gotta understand that. True. When you get to the top, whatever the, the top, top is, is right. to with your definition of the top is your definition of the top. <laughs> right. Okay. You have to stay there. You have to sustain 
Which the work is harder up there. It's harder because now yeah. you got things that people at the top have. Yeah. You know, you got an image, you got brands, you got business, you got meetings. Your time is very, very. It's it's short. You, you don't. It's not enough time in a day. Right now, I'm getting up at four thirty in the morning. Okay, and I knock out when I knock out. I, right. There's no time. I'm going to sleep when I'm when I shut it down. I shut it down. Right. But you <clears throat> you can't just pull people up so easy. I can, I'm only going to encourage you, and I'm going to give you as much of you know my energy as I possibly can Definitely. when it, when it comes to. You know, trying to get you on the right path, but I'm never going to pull you up and make it easy for you. Definitely. Because that's not teaching you anything. And you're going to take everything that I give you for granted and no good deed goes unpunished. So I am going to get the short end of that stick every single time I help somebody that's struggling with whatever it is. So I allow, if you're going through something, I'm going to allow you to go through you it. You have to. You have to. It builds character. That's this is your defining moment. If this breaks you, it's not for then you. everything will. It's, yeah, not it's not for, for you. you. It's not but for you. I'll never know if this was for you if I pull you out of your struggle and place you where your struggle was going to take you anyway. You didn't go through none of the fire. So when the fire hits here, it's going to hit at the it's top. It's going to hit. You don't know Worse. how to work through it. Worse. You don't know how to handle. You know when these merchants are holding your money, you don't know how to go through because you didn't have to go through it. Yeah. So you're naive. So now you're looking at me since you're there. You're looking at me like you know everything, and I'm the one that placed you. <laughs> right. No, not doing it. Yeah. Not no. doing it at all. You need to go through what you, you need go to go through. through because it's very very important to you, and you need to have character and humbleness when you get to the top, and you need to have understanding. And I think that struggle, that journey, is how you stay humble when you do get to and that continuously working hard position. Right. So no, so definitely. So King, man, this was this was this was dope. Yeah, this thanks. was dope, yeah, man. Was, so yeah. I appreciate you coming through. Uh, any last words? How can people find you? Follow you? Um, all that you can stuff? follow me on Instagram at the Creator. It's spelled T H E C R three eight T O R, and my name is. Wayne, thanks for having me. No, man, it was a pleasure. It was all this mine. This is my first podcast. Oh, for real? Yeah. How'd okay. I do? And you, you did good. This uh, is my third. How'd I oh, do? Oh, okay. You, you, <laughs> hey, you know, I thought you've been doing it for a while. You know, <laughs> so but yeah, the same this, this is my first uh, podcast. No, I, I was a little it. nervous at first, right. but no, we appreciate you coming out, man. So, again, family, we appreciate y'all uh, coming on the wealth. Uh, files. Make sure y'all go follow the king and uh, support everything that he's doing because you know it's all about supporting one another. And again, I appreciate you guys going on this journey with me and I'll see you at the top. Peace.